there has been some resistance to this technology, not necessarily mass adoption. Customers don't necessarily understand it or, or, or trust it. How do you see this going mainstream? What is the path to that? Yeah, I, I think there's there's a couple of components to it. And the, the first component is, is really just the, the core part of the experience, which is we've all come to expect the immediacy and low frictionness that that e-commerce and online ha has enabled. But we still often prefer shopping in, in the real world. 90% of retail is in physical stores, brick and mortar. We're still opening more stores than closing today. So there's something about the real world that we all prefer as, as shoppers, but we, we want to capture some of that amazing friction-free experience of, of e-commerce, which for us really means let's, let's get rid of the worst part of shopping, which is lines. You know, if you, if you tabulate it up, there's, there's actually a few billion hours spent waiting in line across the world each year. It's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, and our, our, our thesis is, well, let's, let's have our cake and eat it too. Let's, let's deliver that amazing friction-free experience that e-commerce says that we can have, but let's give it to you in your store that's, that's right next door. Now, you opened the standard store in downtown San Francisco, which is a convenience-type store, no turnstiles, no gates. Um, how is it actually working? What are you learning about customer behavior? I know you have been open during the pandemic. What kind of traffic are you seeing? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, even, even before COVID, we were seeing uh, a lot of excitement among retailers for this, this technology. COVID really ended up being an additional accelerant to want to, to, to adopt some of this, this touchless technology, uh, which Autonomous Checkout does. It's safer for shoppers because you don't have to exchange products with the, the cashier at the end of your trip. You don't have to wait in line, which is, you know, one of the, one of the worst moments uh, from a, from a, from a virus infection perspective. So it's safer for the shopper, but it's also safer for, for the clerks working the store. Uh, so we were, we were really excited to be able to, to keep our, our store open uh, and you know, um, provide this, this convenience store service to, to the local community. Um, we, we have seen a decrease a little bit in, in, uh, in shopper flow, which I think is to be expected, uh, but we're still seeing customers come into the store every day and are just really happy to be able to keep providing that experience. Now, you, you're going to be deploying this technology at Circle K's. Curious, how is it different than Amazon Go? What sets your technology apart? Yeah, yeah, great question. So for, for us, really, the, the, whole, the whole point of the technology is to reach as many shoppers as possible and ideally just put this into every store around the world so that you as a shopper, no matter where you go, get to experience this, this technology and, and get to skip the line. That's really the whole, the whole point. And you don't get that, that amazing experience if it's only in a few select places. And the major difference between us and Amazon is Amazon's building stores. Uh, they're, they're kind of ground up new build outs is how we, we refer to it. Whereas what we're doing is, is taking existing stores, the stores that you already know with the products that you already love, and we're transforming them into stores with autonomous checkout. So the store doesn't change, the products don't change, the shelves don't change, we don't have to do any layout changes, there's no gates, et cetera. It's really just the exact same stores that you know and love with our technology on top of it that lets you skip the line. And that's, that's really the major differentiating factor is it's, it's built to scale and it's built to meet the retailers where they are with their existing fleets without major renovations. You've said you've had conversations with hundreds of retailers, potential retailers. How much are they bringing up concerns about Amazon, fears of competition with Amazon? Yeah, it's a great question. So they won't always necessarily tell us exactly what they're most afraid of. Uh, you, sometimes you got to read the tea leaves when you're bringing a product to market. Uh, but, it, but it is clear that it's, it's something that's fairly top of mind. And, you know, that there's been the war between e-commerce and physical retail. That's been going on for, for quite some time now. But really, I, I think the thing that's top of mind now is Amazon is coming to the physical world. And a Amazon only does that when they think they have a competitive advantage. They only enter a new market when they have something interesting to bear. And I think a big part of that advantage they think they have now is, is autonomous checkout. It is the the Amazon Go and the Just Walk Out technology that they're, they're developing. Now, of course, they have a lot of other impressive uh, assets to bear as well, like their last mile delivery um, with their acquisitions of Whole Foods, for example. But I think you tie all this together, and suddenly it's a, it's a very credible threat that Amazon's going to be able to make real inroads to, to the world of physical retail. And I, I think one of the reasons why we've seen such a strong desire and so much inbound interest in, in our technology is 
you really have to adopt something like this if you're going to stay relevant over the next several years. You have to be able to give that best-in-class experience to your shoppers so that you can stay toe-for-toe -toe with Amazon. So I know that concerns have been raised about privacy issues. You've said you're not holding on to certain kinds of data, but yet when you look at the video, it does look a little big brother. What can you do to address concerns about, you know, what do you know about me if I want to go into a store um, anonymously and, 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 and buy something? You know, it's a little, you know, disconcerting to know that you have all of this information about me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And one thing that we're passionate about is bringing computer vision to the world and in as responsible and safe way as, as possible. And the goal really is to, to install this into to stores everywhere. And because of that, I think there's an even greater level of responsibility to do this in a, in, a, in a very principled way. So the way that we approach this is from the very sort of inception of how the system works, it stays anonymous. So we don't do anything that's involving biometrics. We explicitly don't do facial recognition. So it's not that we have facial recognition, but we try to do it in a very uh, secure way so that that information can't leak or be hacked, for example. We just never do facial recognition. It's kind of a, a bright red line that we say we will, we will never cross. And we really encourage other, other companies, especially companies in the computer vision space, to, to adopt a similar stance. So the, the system as a whole, from a computer vision perspective, from that camera perspective, is completely anonymous. This, it's never able to identify you or re-identify you. It's, it's just following you through your shopping trip as an anonymous guest. And it's really only at the very okay. end where we say, okay, now we need to transact that will we'll tie it to your, your app, uh, which is in your, your hand or in your pocket, uh, and will connect to your payment information to be able to charge. But we, we try very hard to keep those two systems completely separate.